How are you this morning? My name is Pastor Ralph Alderman from Shining Light Church of God by Faith in Sand Hill, Florida, where we bring you greetings. We first of all give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to each of you in your respective places, it's, we're certainly happy to have you tuning in with us or listening to us this morning. Uh, I would also like to give honor to my wife, Sister, Luz, uh, Sister Sarah Alderman. I don't do so, do enough, but I appreciate you forgive me, but we certainly do honor her this morning. And again, to, uh, as I please said to each of you that's just with us this morning and tuning in with us, we hope not to hold you long. We would like to uh, maybe... I don't know, just get right on into uh, our lesson or our, our text this morning. Um, as I pre said, we certainly don't intend to hold you along. We would like to, for you to call your attention to maybe um, the book of Job, chapter 14. And we'll just be reading verse 1 there. And then um, 2 Corinthians also. Uh, chapter 4, and we will be reading, um, I think, verses 7 through 9 there. But uh, certainly you are, we are familiar with uh, Job, uh, chapter 14, uh, just one verse, you could probably recite it. Uh, for it says, man that is born of woman is of a very few days and full of trouble. Praise his name in Second Corinthians uh, chapter four and I could read when verses of uh, seven through nine and reads pray for me. But we have this treasure and earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Second Corinthians, uh, Chapter 4, verses 7 through 9, and also looked at Job, chapter 14, and verse 1. May the Lord ever bless the reading of his red word. It might be good and edifying to the souls of the hearers. Let us pray. Father God, we come once again thanking you, Father, for another day. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for enclosing us in our right minds. Lord, we thank you for starting us off on another day's journey. Lord, we ask that you bless all those that are even tuning in with us. We ask that you look upon the sick this morning, Father, those that are on their bed of affliction, Lord, those that are in hospitals and sick rooms. We pray that you will look upon all that's in authority today be it government or be it the church, Lord, we pray that you would just help us to listen for a word from you. Oh God, help us to be obedient, Lord, and humble ourselves unto what you would have to say to us. Lord, we pray that you would look upon the rioting and the violence that's now also plaguing our nation. Oh Father, I pray that you would just speak a word, Lord on those that are disobedient, Lord. Help us to understand, Lord, that you have everything under control, Lord, and that you will take care of everything in your time. I pray that I will look on, once again, the world and the world situation, Lord, all of the viruses, the plagues, Lord, whatever we may be going through at this time, Father, we pray that you would take care of it as we know you will and that 
we know that you, you're going to do. We ask all these and other blessings in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we would like to deem for a thought from our text, when trouble comes. When trouble comes. As we look at uh, this word trouble, for we found and we know that it means public unrest or disorder, for it causes distress or an anxiety. That's public unrest or disorder, for it causes distress or anxiety. Now, as I, as I looked at it, uh, I have studied just this word, trouble. And I find, I found today that we're living in troubling times. We are living, it seems, in times of trouble. We're living in a time where, you know, that old adage, it used to be where, you know, I could, I could come up and, and talk with you and maybe even uh, want to confer and, and get some advice from you because of my situation. But, but, but now when I, when I, I look and I, I think we, we can't look at another person's uh, situation and uh, we can't look at another person and, and, and even say, uh, you don't know what I'm going through. Because I'm pretty sure they would say, oh, yes, I do, because I'm going through the same thing. And it would probably be true. This, this trouble that we're going through, it, it seems to be universal. Uh, this thing, and, and, the, and the thing about trouble, it, I studied and I found out that uh, uh, it, 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 it has no exemption. It, you know, you're, you're not exempt. <laughs> That's the one thing I found out about trouble. It, it won't exempt you. It don't care if you're rich. It don't care if you're poor. It don't care if you're sick. It don't care if you're well. It don't care what your last name is. It don't care what your position is. I don't care if you're the bishop. You, you, you have trouble. I don't care if you're the president. Trouble comes. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care who you are or what your status in life is. Trouble don't care, if I can say it like that. Trouble don't care. And we're living in a time of trouble. And, and I, I see this, and I want to say this, but I, I don't want it taken out of context. Because I'm understanding God didn't say this to me. I didn't read this. But sometimes, you know, the Spirit will reveal things. I'm not saying God spoke this in my spirit. But when I look at the situation and when I look at the world today, sometimes we are just selfish. And sometimes, you know, we go through things in life. And sometimes we are go through times where our brothers are going through some things and our sisters are going through some things and sometimes we have the, the, the attitude like I know I don't, I don't have time for that you know uh, I've got mine you get yours that kind of syndrome you know but sometimes and always always God has a plan I, I, I believe as sure as I believe my name God got a plan don't you fool yourself God knows what he's doing even in the midst of a pandemic, God knows what he's doing. Even in the midst of all my trouble, even in the midst of the rioting, even in the midst of, of, of 
of, uh, of everything, social distancing, and, 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 and it seems like uh, uh, the people are not complying, and, and seems like the, the, the doctors uh, said that it would be better, uh, you know, if, if we complied and, and, and did it, and seems like maybe now that they relaxed it because they opened the, the, the government. But even through all of that, look like we may be regressing, but I tell you, God's got a plan. He has always had a plan. And as I look at this thing, I, I, and what I deemed, what I was about to say from that point of view, sometimes I think maybe God is saying, well, we can't come together like I would have commanded my brothers and sisters to be. Love one another. As Christ have loved you. But me, but but so sometimes when we just won't comply. And as I look at the, the virus situation, I really see because of this virus, in a sense, it's almost like I need you. And it's almost like you need me. Now, all of us are not thinking or have that frame of mind, but if you look at this thing, according to the medical reports and, and what they're studying, if we are to get through this unscathed, if we're, we're to come out of this, I need you. Because this is what social justice means. I need to wear my mask. You need to wear your mask. We need to do the social distance thing for mitigation. But maybe I, I just I just feel like God's saying, when I can get you together, and when when you can understand that you need your brother, and your brother can understand that he needs you, and when your sister can understand that she needs you, and you need her, that's when we'll get together and understand now all of us need God. Because that's our ticket out, but not separate together. Listen, this is one, one thing that I do understand about trouble. Trouble is a terrible thing. And I say that from experience, as I'm sure that a lot of you have experience. Trouble has camped out at my door plenty of times and, and even stayed there a, a little longer than I, I really wanted it to, which I really didn't want to stay there to even uh, visit me. But as so, and as I experienced, I found out some things. Trouble comes with worration, for it brings with it depression. And that's just to name a few few because when we are in trouble, I see that we are distressed. When we are in trouble, I find that we are oppressed. When I'm in trouble, I find that I'm sad. When I'm in trouble, I find that I'm lonely. I can be among 50 people, but if I'm in trouble, I'm still lonely. Trouble is a terrible thing. But to all of us, it comes. We're, we're none, and the thing that, that's so amazing about this trouble is that we're none exempt to it. For it does not care if you're rich. It will visit you. It, we, it does not care if you're poor. It will visit you. It don't care about your status in life. It will visit you. It don't care if you're sick. It don't care if you're poor. It don't care what your last name is. When trouble comes, it comes with a vengeance, and you are not exempt, no matter who you are. 
And that's what I found out about trouble. And another thing I found out, listen, no matter who you are, I don't care how strong you think you are, but when you are in trouble, you are no match for trouble. I don't care what your position is. I don't care what your status is. You can be the president of the United States, but when trouble comes, you cannot run the United States. You can be over the whole Church of God, Church of God by Faith Incorporated, uh, Southern Baptist, uh, whomever the denomination may be, but when trouble comes, you cannot lead your people. When trouble comes, it's a terrible thing. Oh, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. So as we get in our text uh, this afternoon, we find Job, and but we know the the story of Job. We may have even taught it ourselves, heard it preached, studied it, read it, and and even though we don't really even have time to really go through the details of Job's dilemma and his position, but we found out, find out from uh, even the previous uh, chapters of Job, he was a man that found favor with God. He was a very rich man, had uh, everything I, I would say that he wanted, needed, or even desired. But he was the man of God, and that was the key. So much so to, I wish I could get in that position where God had so much confidence in him. He even told the devil, have you tried him? That's got to be a perfect and upright man, as was what he was. And as I said, we're not going to get into that because that, that's just not where I'm at. And, and you'll see we, we're going a, a little different direction and we're half the way done with it now. But this man, Job, as he began to lose all that he had, all that God had blessed him with. And let me just say this. And, and, and you may look at me and say, that's just dumb. But I feel that every man, every woman, should understand that we need trouble in our lives at times. Well, I know you say I'm, I'm crazy now. But listen, if I never have any trouble, then how will I know who God is and what he is? Oh, yeah, we can testify and we can talk about what God has done and who God is and what he will do and what he has done, but come on now. Without actually going through trouble, even though God knows what we are because he made us and what we can stand and what we can't stand, but I tell you of a truth, you can say what you want, but you don't know where well, you can go through until you have to go through it. Well, praise his name. You do not know of a surety 
as the psalmist said, for God is, not has been, not will be, not want to be, but the psalmist says, for God is a very present help in times of trouble. Oh, praise his name. All the things that Job lost, everything that he had gone through, he failed to give up on God. When trouble comes, it tests the very foundation of a man. It tests your character. Because when trouble comes, and, and, and you can look at this, and even it was with Job, you don't, people rationalize, and you know, you, you, you've got to have done something. And especially when we go through those things where one is right behind another, and you know, uh, our, our, our friends and our acquaintances, uh, they start putting what they call two and two, but it's really two and ten together. Oh, he done something, or she done something, and uh, and God is, is is just punishing. That's not what God is. That's not the way God do things. Even with Job, his friends were figuring out, well, what did he do? We're soon to, we're soon to close. But with him, and we're going to go ahead and get into the Corinthians, but what I want you to know, because then, then we'll get what we're all about. Now, I promise you that. But what I, I want you to understand while we're in this vein and what I wanted you to understand about Job is, Yes, and, and, and it will be brought up in Corinthians as I prepare to close, but I think our trouble is not even really about us. But actually about who God is. Oh praise his name. I'm gonna say that again. I don't think it's really about us. It's about who God is. Joe was a man that understood that. And when we can understand that, then we can go through our trouble. Let me go ahead on and prepare to close as, as we go to 2 Corinthians and chapter 4. And this, this, this kind of blew my mind because even though I've read it before and I've and I've, I've understand, stood it, I've even probably preached it several times before, but I, I, I see it under a new light now. Even though I understood, I thought, uh, what the Apostle Paul was saying, but even in my understanding, it uh, looks like I kind of see it under, under a, a new light. Because uh, for he says, and, and I would like to just read maybe the, the seventh verse, uh, for he says, but... But, but we have this treasure in, in earthen vessel that uh, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And that's got me, I, I, as many times as I've read it, but, uh, but uh, it, it, never, it never caught me like this before when trouble comes. But, and we're, we're, we're closing now. But if you understand nothing, I said to this point, please, please get this. Because as, as I see the Apostle Paul, and I believe he meant, uh, 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 I don't care how much trouble, Lord help me up in here, I'm getting through, did I get in anyway? I want to say that again. I think he meant, he said, I, I, I don't care how much trouble 
that I get in anyway. I don't care how serious it is. I don't care how it looked. And we know trouble, it, 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 it sometimes it looked bad. But I hear the Apostle Paul said, God said, I am only an earthen vessel. And that's what got me. For he said, I have this treasure in earthen vessel. Because see, I believe that, 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 that I'm an earthen vessel. And what that means to me, I believe I'm just a piece of clay. I, I, I'm not that important. And since I'm not that important, oh, help me right, right up in here, I can't get myself out of trouble. I never could. I worry. I get distressed. I get perplexed. I, I get worried. I get all out of it. Some, some, sometimes I, I, I just want to beat my head against a wall and trying to figure out a way to get me out of trouble. But God says you're an earthen vessel. And that means I'm just a piece of clay, not worthy to be a treasure. But this is what I never saw before. I never caught it like this before. I am God's treasure because I am a container. All right, help me wrap it here. To be used by God to get him glory. My only importance to me is to be a container. My importance to me is to carry the word of God. I don't know what yours is, but that's what the container means to me. You see, again, I'm, I'm never, I never was able to get me out of trouble. That's why God said, an earthen vessel, that's me, which is a container. I, all I want to do is just be there for whatever God want to use me for. I have no power. When I'm distressed, I have no power. For the power lives in God. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, when I'm in trouble, I have no power. I'm just an earthen vessel. But the power lies in God. Getting out of trouble lies in God. I don't have it, but if I had a million dollars and I lost every cent of it, that's fine. Because it wasn't about me anyway. If I, if, 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 if I don't have a cent to pay the rent, that's all right, because it's not about me anyway. I don't have the power to get me out of trouble. I am an earthen vessel. I am just a piece of clay, ready to be used of God, just to say, God, I may be in trouble, but I still want you to use me. Just say, God, I may be at the end of my rope, I am distressed, and I am perplexed, but I'm not in despair because I'm not supposed to get myself out of trouble. I'm not supposed to get myself out of distress. I'm not supposed to get myself from being perplexed. That's your job. Praise his name. That's not me. I got out of it. That's not me. When trouble comes, the whole message is I'm an earthen vessel. But God has the power. The power has never been in us. The, the, the way out has never been in us. The way out has always been in God. But if we would allow him to let us you let him use us as a container to do whatever his will declares. Then when I am in trouble, it's not that bad because I'm not trying to figure a way out because I know where the answer lies. The power is in God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come. Oh, we thank you today for what you've shown us. We thank you today for what your word declared, that I'm just an earthen vessel, that I have no way of getting myself out of trouble. 
but that the power lies in you and not in us. I pray that you would just continue to bless us, continue to keep us. This is our prayers. In Jesus' name we continue to pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.